All right. Well, I'm first of all, I'm delighted to be here. Um, I I think the expertise I bring to the table is uh, number one, I wrote the bill that created the trillion dollar coin. Uh, sometimes the question is brought up about, uh, well, how did you do that? You weren't a member of Congress. Uh, the fact of the matter is members of Congress don't write bills. Uh, they, uh, bills are delivered to their office and uh, sometimes by lobbyists, sometimes by agencies, sometimes by committee staff. They go through the process of being formalized by the Legislative Council. Um, I happen to be the head of the agency, the United States Mint at the time. That, by the way, is a presidential appointment with Senate confirmation. I have stories about the confirmation process I can tell, but I'm not gonna get into here. Um, but um, as the head of the agency, I conceived of the trillion dollar coin. I had very specific objectives in mind. I am a Democrat. I was appointed by a Democratic president, Bill Clinton. I worked with a Republican committee chair. So this was a bipartisan effort. Um, and uh, together we passed that bill. And the fact that uh, it can have a trillion dollar denomination on it was absolutely uh, part of the intent. We did not foresee putting that kind of uh, face value on the coin, but uh, it was very explicit. And in fact, it was the first time to my knowledge in American history in which Congress had not mandated the face value of a coin, but had left it to the discretion of the Secretary of the Treasury. Um, I think the other expertise that I bring to the table is that as a uh, Chief of Staff at the Treasury Department to the Secretary at the beginning of the administration, um, I have insight into how decision-making is made and the political and policy uh, aspects of decision-making inside at the highest levels of the Treasury Department, including uh, its interaction with the White House. I was um, uh, the Treasury Department's liaison with the White House in my position and also with the Federal Reserve. And then I also spent time at very senior levels of Congress uh, as legislative director to Lloyd Benson, uh, a Democratic Senator from Texas, and as uh, the staff director of the Senate Finance Committee. So I think those are the perspectives and the expertise that I bring to the table. Um, and like I said, I'm delighted to be here and address some of the myths that have been spun around the trillion dollar coin um, and uh, answer any questions. Okay. I'm gonna jump over to Joe, is that next? Sure. <clears throat> uh, what are you, you doing? Okay, I will. Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to pick this up or if the sound is all right. But just, there are some other, you, the, the, one of the things that's been exciting about the conversation around the coin, it has spurred other proposals for unusual bonds and other options. Interesting questions over if we actually get to that point, uh, what are the range of options that might exist? And one of the interesting ones for me is, do you want to create a solution that just does away with this foolishness, which is part of this in the way of the trillion dollar coin is trying to, to get at? Or do we want to kind of say, like, we're going to engage with parts of politics, so are we. So let's get this administration to where they need to be. And like, if the Republicans want to make decisions that might not be optimal for that in the future, like, let them make those decisions in a public and politically accountable way. Like, how do we start to think about that? When we get back to the point of like, do we want to go forward with the coin or do we want to go forward with one of the other alternatives that's now emerging? Do you want to maybe respond? Okay. Um, so, uh, invoking the 14th Amendment is, I think, along with the trillion dollar coin, sort of the two best options at the last moment. And I think the politics of the, this confrontation sort of drive toward a cliffhanger in which a decision would be made at the very last minute. And the reason for that is that um, it looks increasingly likely that uh, the Republicans in the House in particular are in a position where they're committed to uh, a confrontation to the end. Now, you never know about this until you get to the end. Um, and also, the White House has laid out that 
it's not willing to make compromises and make major cuts in Social Security, Medicare, uh, and other programs that uh, Republicans in the House are calling for. So, um, and we're unlikely to see a loosening of those positions uh, because uh, both sides believe they can win in that confrontation and not just prevail in their policy preferences, but politically. Um, the Democrats on the one hand believe they can demonstrate once again that they think are the, um, are, is the irresponsibility uh, in governance of uh, the Republican House in particular. Um, I think Republicans on the other hand are um, who are driving this confrontation believe they can they are playing to the base and that they can benefit by playing to the base. So I think we need to understand that uh, both sides are in a position where politically they do not want to, they believe they can gain from and uh, the confrontation right to the end, or they could lose politically by appearing to be the one that backs down in this game of chicken. So in that situation, you want to have uh, some solutions in your back pocket. And I think when you look at the 14th Amendment and you look at trillion dollar coin, certainly the 14th Amendment, invoking the 14th Amendment is more decorous. I mean, it seems more uh, dignified to rely upon the Constitution. And I think there are some real advantages to that. But I think in terms of the politics and the public relations, it has some significant downsides. Once that, one thing is you want to get this confrontation. Once you make a decision that you're going to invoke the 14 or mint the coin, you want to get this confrontation behind you as quickly as possible. It's going to create a firestorm. You want that firestorm to be over and out as quickly as possible. Invoking the 14th Amendment is likely to lead to, I think, a, a protracted series of court challenges that continue for months and feed this story over and over again. Certainly, minting the coin will create controversy. But I, it appears to me that the law is in precedent is so clear about uh, the secretary's discretion to mint the coin. Uh, and the fact that, in principle, there is nothing new in the trillion dollar coin. There's a couple new zeros on it, but that's it. And in that circumstance, that um, I think a court challenge will be, and it's hard to predict how courts uh, deal with issues today, but I think this is more of an open and shut case. And we'd be able to get the controversy behind us rapidly and we could deal with uh, the entire debt limit once and for all. Minting the coin will defang the debt limit. So with that, um, you know, I'll stop with that.